Hey guys, COVID-19 has paved the way for us all to really level up our learning, right? Um, I mean, kids are studying online at school, um, but there are also so many other opportunities for us all to, to be better and level up our skills for both kids, young kids, and adults. Um, actually, you know, because it's COVID, we're now able to actually really be productive and efficient. This is an IFO script, and um, and, and this is a script for us to, to be able to produce the show online. We're going to have a number of fantastic guests too, and you know, the digital world holds so many opportunities for us to learn, but also holds so many other opportunities for us to think about how we should be improving you know, the, the market and, and the society and the world in which we learn today. And design thinking is an interesting concept. Um, it is about designing products that work for today's industry, that work for today's environment, and works for the habits of people today. We're actually going to be able to, to kind of listen to some of our guests uh, who will act as experts today and share with us what they think about design thinking, about the opportunities available in the ed tech sphere. So I'm super excited and welcome to this episode of IFO. Mr. Nguyen Tan Sun, Chairman of MVV Entrepreneur Academy Corporation, Chairman of MVV Group. Mr. Nguyen Tan Sun is a well-known businessman, lecturer, author and media expert in Vietnam. As an entrepreneur, he actively invests in media, education, healthcare and technology. He is the founder of TNA, the largest PR firm in Vietnam. And let's get to know our next guest, Anthony Choi. Hello from Australia. My name is Anthony Choi, one of the co-founders and CEO of Makers Empire. I started my career as a chartered accountant, working for one of the big four accounting and consulting firms, where I had the good fortune to be transferred from Adelaide to London. I ended up staying in Europe for 10 years. I also lived and worked in the Czech Republic for a media and entertainment company where I was able to experience the different cultures and people from Central and Eastern Europe. Upon my return to LA seven years ago with three beautiful children who were all born in the Czech Republic, I was curious to explore the possibility of harnessing digital technologies to develop essential life skills such as empathy and having a growth mindset. This led to the founding of Makers Empire an education technology company that makes fun and easy to use 3D design software. I'm thrilled to be here and share with you my journey and experience with helping two and a half million students in 50 countries develop their creative confidence and design thinking skills. IFO audience, welcome back to the show. Today's episode is very, very special. Um, we. We have somebody that I've known for a very long time in Vietnam who is a veteran. Um, he is now involved in, in a number of wonderful you know, ed tech businesses. And one of that is meant for adults. We're gonna talk about that a little bit, you know, learning online for adults. And then one guest uh, is joining us from Australia and um, he is the CEO and founder of Makers Empire and that is for kids. So two really different audiences today talking about, you know, education and and the digital world is a really interesting topic. So welcome to the show. I'm Nguyen Thanh Sơn and Anthony Choi. Uh, we're so glad to have you today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, now, now Anthony, you're joining us from overseas and Thanh Sơn, you're joining us from Ho Chi Minh City at the moment, are, are, that, is that correct? Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so you know, First question, very basic, but a lot of people don't really know. What are the three words you would probably describe, you know, design thinking? Like what's, what's your definition of design thinking? So I think from, from my perspective, um, the three words that would best be associated with design thinking I think would have to be empathy, yeah. problem solving, and growth mindset. And why those three words, Anthony? Because um, yeah, design thinking, it is a way of thinking and working that helps us to define and solve a problem. So it is a non-linear, you know, iterative and human-centered approach. So it creates an environment that lets you know, new ideas grow and views failure as an opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very short and succinct. Uh, wonderful. I love it. Uh, what about you, Aung What do you think design thinking is? 
I think the first word uh, for us is uh, observation. So uh, the second word is I agree with uh, Anthony is empathy. Uh, and the first one, you know, I like to try. So prototype is the first one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, prototype would probably be describing a lot of your, your endeavors in life, right? So, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now, as people who have rich experiences working with, with young children, Anthony, you know, how has design thinking added more values to, to help a child's personal growth? That's a, that's a, that's a very good question, um, yeah, Phoebe. So from our perspective, like design thinking, it, it helps a you know, child's um, personal growth just by providing them with a you know, problem-solving toolkit you know, that they can you know, apply just to find solutions to a wide range of problems. And uh, I touched on the, um, you know, the growth mindset, so it also helps to develop that. You know, so where setbacks and failure are viewed as you know, valuable learning moments, you know, and hard work and persistence is valued and rewarded. That's great, that's great. Now, um, Aung San, we know you, you've had many, many years in, in the advertisement and media world and, and recently at tech. Um, people in Vietnam call you the wizard of marketing. Now, as an adult and as the wizard of marketing in Vietnam, how did you apply design thinking to make decisions related to products or customer service? We just didn't call it design thinking at that time. Uh, we have a different name for it, but uh, definitely we applied the principle of design thinking in um, plan and execute uh, great uh, communication campaign. Um, so we're talking about customer insight, we're talking about how we uh, go the insight from a sea of information, we're talking about uh, A-B test. Uh, so it's, it's very similar to what design thinking uh, is on about. Uh, but I think the great thing about design thinking is the uh, um, you know, empathy part. Uh, you know, in, the, in the old world, usually we act as a, uh, more than propagandists rather than uh, people that have uh, empathy with their problem with uh, consumer. So um, I think that uh, recently the uh, people-centric uh, thinking and design thinking uh, will further uh, what we uh, planned for many years uh, and put it in, in more uh, conceptualized uh, structures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, empathy is something that you both mentioned. Um, and empathy isn't really a term that most people would often associate with design thinking. Um, can you elaborate more on exactly how empathy plays into somebody's utilization or adoption of design thinking? Maybe I, I can kick this off, um, Son, if you don't mind. I think it's, um, I think it's important sure. like, yeah, to stress the, on the empathy part because if you're looking at a situation, and it's, you have to empathize with what's going on with that situation but also you're looking at the people in that situation. So what are you actually trying to um, yeah, address? What are the, their concerns? What are the, um, the problems that they're facing? But also try to understand things from, from their angle, their perspective. And then I think once you can yeah, it's, um, yeah, understand that, then you can start to yeah, define the actual yeah, the problem or, yeah, that you're trying to help yeah, and to um, yeah, solve for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So being able to, to kind of come, come up with solutions to service um, other people through understanding what they need, right? Correct, that, correct, that's great, Anthony. correct. Now, Anthony, you, you uh, created Maker's Empire, and then Aung San, you created MVV. And uh, Maker's Empire is for kids, MVV is for adults. You know, how do, how do you guys think about, you know, what is required to, to train adults and kids for digital citizenship? So I think it's um, yeah, um, for that, um, with the, um, yeah, I think it's um, yeah, for the global digital citizenship there, should just embrace yeah, uh, the digital technologies or the emerging technologies, but more importantly, to use it as like an enabler yeah, to achieve the, the positive outcomes. I think it's um, in order to, I think it's um, 
train them to effectively use it. I think you know, you've got to still have yeah, those soft skills, yeah, such as yeah, empathy and just treating people with respect. So that is just as important like in a digital environment or yeah, a non-digital environment. So these young people, they should feel safe, but they also need to be responsible yeah, for their actions, whether online or offline. So I, I said, uh, what about adults? It seems like, you know, it seems like adults, it's easier to educate, but also a lot more difficult to educate. Well, uh, you have different kind of adult, right? Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, actually is not just only uh, training or learning. Uh, what we want to tackle is actually knowledge. Uh, we're talking about the knowledge economy. And uh, what we're trying to do is to make the knowledge more accessible uh, to all the people. So what, what we really want is the way we distribute the knowledge. Um, and the second thing is to use that knowledge uh, to better their day-to-day -day, uh, life. IFO audiences, we're going to go to IFO on the go. Oh my goodness, you are so excited. Uh, I am so excited because we're, we now get a, uh, get a chance to get out of our own homes. And on the go, this time, we're going to be talking to a teacher and he's going to share with you his perspective on studying online. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. If you're struggling with studying online, you do not want to miss this. So many things have happened over the last two years. Schools have to adopt the new normal of learning in unpredictable terms. During the school closures, all face-to-face -face lessons have to move to completely online lessons. Many instructors find the abrupt switch to fully online learning has been particularly stressful and difficult. However, there is always a silver lining at the end of the tunnel. In this on-the-go episode, we'll have a chance to meet Ang Gung, Head of Department of Teaching and Learning Methodology and Technology at University of Education, who will shed more light on e-pedagogy. All right, thanks so much for being part of the IFO On The Go episode today. As I know that you are an expert in digital transformation in education and also your department of uh, teaching, learning, methodology and technology is also the only and the first department that do research on this topic. So do you face any difficulties uh, when it comes to research, particularly there's not many uh, materials and resources on this matter? So I, I could say uh, our uh, Faculty of Education and Technology is uh, unique and uh, uh, ve very newborn uh, faculty uh, in the higher education in Vietnam. So we, are, of course, uh, we face many, many difficulties, uh, but opportunities, new opportunities uh, to uh, meet new trends of the uh, digital, especially in education. We consider digital transformation in education is com complete uh, work, uh, but. Um, we steadily, uh, step by step, uh, go, uh, move forward. Uh, digitalization and digital transformation uh, must uh, um, complete uh, radically, uh, but not separately. Uh, for instance, uh, how we will design a digital curriculum, how we can implement uh, new trends in uh, digital education into uh, teacher training as well uh, for uh, school practice daily. Uh, how we uh, can um, uh, train a new generation of digital citizens uh, toward uh, the digital education experts. Uh, especially <clears throat> now we face to uh, how we uh, make a conversation and uh, communicate with the uh, Generation Z and Generation Alpha. Uh, they are very interesting because uh, they actually are digital citizens. Yes. We, we are fugitive or uh, immigrant, 
digital immigrant, and we had to adapt, we had to um, implement a new technology, but uh, Generation Z and Alpha, uh, they are already digital. And uh, we also developed the framework for digital competence and literacy for uh, pre-garden, mm. uh, preschool, uh, kindergarten, uh, to up to uh, upper uh, secondary uh, students. Otherwise, uh, we also have to um, connect uh, with the partners overseas. And uh, now uh, we also play the role uh, such as I, I, I call uh, digital guard in education. And all things, all new uh, news in uh, digital education uh, come to Vietnam and we have to test, we have to adapt, we have to uh, think about how uh, we can uh, realize and mobilize all resources uh, based on these digital tools and uh, integrate into uh, uh, education practice in Vietnam. Mm. Um, I love the point when you say that um, the older generation is like an immigrant to uh, digital transformations and technologies why the Gen, Gen Z or younger generations they are already digital so from a teacher's perspective uh, what do you think is the pros and cons when it comes to online teaching mm -hmm. we have to face uh, many many obstacles uh, as well as uh, opportunities our teachers now uh, have to improve uh, their digital skills uh, digital uh, literacy also and uh, I suggest uh, the main uh, importance in this area is uh, they have to change mindset. They have to change the process of uh, learning. Uh, before uh, they used uh, to teach uh, in this way but uh, if they integrate uh, teacher, uh, digital teaching tools they have to change the uh, process uh, change the activities because with the digital tools our learners uh, can uh, open more and uh, more of the um, knowledge and, and, and con content knowledge and also they can use these digital tools to practice not only uh, inside school uh, but uh, yeah, outside or extra activities uh, outside the school. Mm. So, um, uh, from your observations, how often do your students lose focus in your lessons and how do you help them to engage in your lesson more? Uh, I uh, have to say, uh, in online lesson, uh, the students are always a loss of the focus on uh, concerned in the main ideas of lesson. So we have to uh, force all resources and energy uh, to engage them uh, into the lesson. But uh, the main uh, idea is uh, we have to change the construct, construction of lesson because online lesson is uh, not the same as face-to-face -face lesson. Mm. We have to change the procedures, we have to change the activities. Uh, during the online lesson, we uh, organize different, various activities to engage them. Not only listen, not only uh, writing, uh, not only listening, uh, but they have to use different digital tools interactive digital tools to make uh, more interactive activities or conversation in the online platform. So that is our first talk with Angkung about online teaching situations. So now back to Phoebe and two other experts. Now we can see from the clip, um, a virtual classroom is probably going to be a necessity of the future. Uh, even if we're going back to offline schooling, you know, virtual classrooms are always gonna be there. And, you know, since now we have virtual classrooms, we have laptops, we have computers, 
Is that all there is to digital education, Anthony and Engson, or is there a lot more? What, what are your opinions on this? Definitely a, a lot more. So uh, I have struggled with uh, uh, e-learning or online learning in Vietnam because uh, people think of uh, e-learning as, uh, you know, uh, you have the traditional classroom and you go to the Zoom, or you go to Teams, uh, and, and then this is online learning. Um, now there is a lot different thing that uh, happen in the edtech uh, nowadays. Um, so uh, I believe that the, the future is belong to uh, digitalized learning. Yeah, digitalized learning. And I, I, I assume it, this can be learning anywhere, any time, anyhow, right? You don't need possibly a laptop. You can do it on your, 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 your iPhone or your, your, your phone, you know, um, even more ways of learning, visual, audio, you know, touch, right? There, there can be multiple, multiple ways. Um, Anthony, what, what constitutes digital education in your opinion? I think it's um, Son touched on it um, yeah, um, earlier, but uh, I think for me it's um, it just it just makes the um, you know, connected learning possible. I think it's and so I think that's um, yeah, that's that's important. I think it's um, and I think with this um, yeah, like um, if the students need help yeah, just with something, not only can they just um, you know, digitally connect with their teachers but they can also connect with their classmates or just the general community just to find you know, the answers you know, right away. Some of the schools are like, no, you know, it's too expensive for us to bring some of this knowledge onto the digital platform or it's too expensive for us to allow students to take um, some of these classes like that. Uh, what's, what's your feedback to that? Any comments to that type of um, thinking, that line of thinking? I, I believe that we're talking about the area of alternative uh, learning and um, school may be resistant to that. Um, when we're talking about the uh, online learning, we're talking about social learning. So uh, the platform that uh, connect your student, your pupil, your teachers to a broader network and learning from sharing. So I don't think that the technology or the uh, the classroom is uh, is is expensive. Uh, I believe if you open up your system, if you open up for ideas, uh, then you will. You know, knowledge is a special thing. That the more you share, the more you reach. So uh, it depends very much on the numbers of people that involved in that process. Uh, when you have millions of people, then the cost for it is just a friction of what you pay for today. I think I should add to just um, yeah, to, to what you know, Son mentioned there is that um, yeah, like the, the education institutions, um, yeah, they, they should embrace yeah, the, the digital yeah, adoptions um, because they'll be preparing these students yeah, yeah, for the future as yeah, the students will be I think it's, um, yeah, we'll have plenty of experience using the software or the emerging technology uh, during the school. So this will make it easier for them you know, when they you know, transition from studying or to when they will start their career. So it's an investment yeah, for the student's future. So, so there, there is some you know, initial fixed cost, but the marginal returns are always going to, to be uh, greater than the marginal cost once, once you know, all of this adoption is, is being done. Now, I said you're one of the... Actually, I think you're probably the first person to bring, you know, a systemized virtual learning to adults in Vietnam and to use Vietnamese teachers to actually do that, right? You talked about skills and in the broader sense, how would you really define like, you know, success of, of this process for adults in your opinion? Well, we're talking about uh, making the program fun and enjoyable uh, for kids, right? Uh, for a dan is a little bit different. Um, when we look at the reason why they not uh, yet to embrace the virtual uh, learning and online learning, we realize that um, well, uh, they will learn when um, they are forced to learn, right? Uh, if a compliance for, for, for them to learn, they will learn when it's actually helping them 
to do a better job uh, and we learn and it's fun. But creating a fun uh, learning environment is costly. So uh, we need to find the other way. And uh, we believe the uh, right approach that offer them what they need when they need it. You're talking about uh, they can learn from any device, anywhere, but also uh, anything. So they can learn whatever they want, that, that what we want to create. So the successful uh, virtual learning program uh, need to be first, need to be short. Um, I don't think people have time to spend half an hour, 45 minutes on uh, learning material. We uh, focus on micro learning. We talking about three to five minute uh, bite. Um, then uh, is we need to help them uh, to do a better job right away. Uh, so we need to create or design the uh, virtual 24 hours of the working environment and i think the first one is you see that the self-based learning process is very tough for people because uh, you feel very lonely in that journey well gentlemen thank you very very much for sharing so ifo on the go coming right up next and right after ifo on the go we're going to go back to our talk and it's going to be ceo to ceo where we talk about our two guests viewpoints on business starting up as well as what their rules of success are. So you don't want to miss that. Let's take a break with IFO Facts. Australia is home to seven of the world's top 100 hashtag fintech companies, has over 30 hashtag medtech incubators and accelerators innovating across the country and boasts a strong track record of Australian universities collaborating with global multinationals on leading research and development. Now let's see what's coming up next with IFO. So welcome back to the IFO On The Go with me, Thu Zhuang, and the expert, Ang Kuang. And in this talk, we will dig deeper on the usage and applications of technologies in education and assessment system of students' performance and outcome. So Ang Kuang, what other uh, platforms besides Zooms and Google Meetings that teachers are using? I can see the Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting or Microsoft Teams or Google Meet uh, is only the online meeting. Mm. The main idea is how um, teacher can uh, reconstruct their procedures and they have to create a pedagogical scenario. In the face-to-face -face mode, uh, we cannot at the same time do uh, explain lesson, explain content and assessment. But using uh, interactive assessment tool, we, we, we can see uh, at the same time uh, parallelly the reasons uh, of reflection or feedback uh, mm. from learners. Otherwise, we can interpret some uh, brainstorming, interactive brainstorming uh, or mind mapping and at the same time, many, many learners can contribute their own ideas, they can discussion, they can reflection uh, to others' uh, ideas. So the normal way that we often do to assess students' performance and their outcome is through uh, exams or tests, like in-person tests and in-person exams. But how can we assess their performance and their outcome during uh, this pandemic when it comes to online teaching? We also provide uh, for learners uh, learning management system and uh, by this learning management system we can collect uh, so uh, many many information or feedback uh, from learners um, the teacher uh, can access uh, to the uh, LMS and can make a very clear and detailed uh, report for mm. each activities 
of each learner. Uh, we can um, control uh, access uh, all uh, process of learning. Uh, uh, also, uh, we can um, control and check the progress or make a statistics for uh, learning achievement progress for each learner. Mm. Um, you are a long-term partner uh, of uh, Australia. So on the way to achieve uh, a comprehensive digital transformation in education, uh, do you have any projects or examples that you could tell us that you are doing right now with your partner? Recently, we have contract with uh, Stampunk to develop uh, the um, so virtual reality and uh, augmented reality products uh, it's very interesting because uh, we can uh, open and uh, extend the learning environment we can bring all uh, things in the real world uh, into inside the class mm -hmm. Um, so one of the uh, prioritized policies of the government is to focus and invest more in educational sector. So where do you see Vietnamese schools and universities fit into this trend? We uh, apply also new policy to uh, make uh, Vietnam education digitalized. Mm. Uh, it's very, very important. Uh, we have uh, also uh, decision uh, from uh, Prime Minister, uh, uh, the digital transformation in Vietnam toward uh, uh, 2030. Uh, and uh, in this uh, process, uh, we can uh, uh, engage all teacher training institutions uh, to uh, training, to train and retrain uh, new teaching staff uh, the last thing uh, is, in terms of uh, transformation in education, we not uh, talk about the poor or, or, or rich uh, population or resources. We talk about only the uh, space, uh, the pace, uh, the, the uh, uh, speed, and uh, we, we can uh, use this opportunity to move forward uh, very well very effectively and make uh, the education process more and more efficient. Right. Thank you so much. That is a very insightful uh, talk with you. So Anthony and Aung San, uh, before you created your companies, uh, you also were successful people in the, in the business world, right? And people define you as successful because they see all these you know, shiny things that you've been able to do, all these shiny corporations that you've been able to bring to the next level. How do you define your own success throughout the different stages of your life? Let's start with, um, let's start with Aung San. You know, the definition of success is uh, very much depend on your vision and your ambitions. And uh, for starter, I'm, I'm not a very ambitious pe person. Um, when I came back to uh, Vietnam in 1994 from Russia, uh, like many other people, uh, my definition of success is having a, uh, a good job, and a good job is like 500 US dollar monthly salary, uh, a motorbike, and a, uh, an apartment in uh, Hanoi Center. Uh, that's the definition of success. Uh, after two years, when I uh, start my first company, uh, my definition of success is to make the company successful um, and sell it to a uh, uh, bigger companies, right? But then I realized that um, actually um, my ambitions or my vision uh, is too too small, and I I think I can scale uh, that experience. Um, and then you know um, I invest in twenty companies now, and um, for me I will be successful when on that. Uh, CEO and founder of the companies that I invest uh, successful. I will do whatever I can to help them to be successful. Thank you, Aung San. Anthony, what about you? How has your vision of success changed throughout the years? 
I think it's um, I think it just depends on the um, just the stages of your career and your life. But um, I think one of the key traits I think it's um, for um, for for success is to like, to have a growth mindset. So you're continuous learning. You're always looking to improve, and um, also um, just to be adaptive. Then when you're starting at your um, yeah, a, a company itself, um, or doing a startup, I think it's. Um, and it's um your and it's um yeah you have to adapt you know all the skills that you've learned from the past and um yeah to and it's to try to grow it from from the ground up. So I think it's um yeah and it's um as each phase of your life or your career and it's um yeah progress yeah and it's um and the views change and it's um but I think you know the thing that you know binds all that thread together is um yeah and it's um it's just having a growth mindset and um and it's um. And I think just you know, to be able, like you know, continuous learning and just to be do better and better. I'm very very curious. You know, within you you guys have both mentioned your 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 thoughts uh, and how you define success throughout the different stages. But I'm also very curious because for people who are able to start things new or who are able to really change you know the makeup of society there must be something that you're doing in your daily habits that are different from other people um so so what is it that you're doing differently in your daily life that may lead you to being able to do so much as you've done today yeah i'm, I'm very curious so anthony any tips on that and then i soon any tips on that it's um uh, it's to be consistent and it's um you know um, first and foremost so I think it's um, yeah, just like with anything you want to do, and whether you want to be the best um, sports star or whether you want to be uh, the best singer and, or the best, um, I, think it's, um, yeah, I think it's an accountant or entrepreneur, it's just to keep that um, consistency going. But also never, yeah, never yeah, settle for anything less yeah, than the standard that you set for yourself. I think it's, um, don't compare I think it's, um, yourself to others. Just yeah, be the best that you can be. And just yeah, you know, and it's um have that you know dogged yeah, you know, and it's um your know, perseverance to to just keep them um, yeah you know, moving forward. Thank you, Anthony. So always showing up and moving forward. Um, Aysen, what are you dif doing differently from from the majority of the other people in your daily life? I think you need to have a daily ritual of reflection. Only ask yourself. Uh, how can we do better? How can we do differently? Um, how we uh, learn from today's uh, activities and today's uh, lesson and how we, how we plan for tomorrow. I really focus on thinking uh, about different scenarios, uh, different situations, uh, different approach. So I think it's very important for all of my business that we trying to learn from our mistake and trying to do a better job every day. Wonderful, thank you so much, gentlemen. And to the audiences at home, we still have more resources coming right up next. So next up is Voice of the Week, where we actually get to see you know, our youths putting themselves out there and trying to practice a skill that maybe they have not done so before. So Voice of the Week, coming right up next. Hi, Queen Yang, welcome to Voice of the Week this time. How are you feeling um, being live with all of our, our, our judges here today? Actually, I am a little bit nervous because I haven't experienced any kind of events like this before. All right. Well, you do look a little nervous, but I think it's best to maybe breathe a little bit. Uh, you know, after the episode today, you're going to have a lot of resources to help you um, be even better <laughs> at all of these skills. Anthony, would you be able to read us the prompt? Queen Anne, um, yeah, COVID-19 has forced education and training to be offered online. How, if, how effective is it, Queen Anne? Okay, so now I will answer the question. Um, to evaluate the efficiency of online learning, on a global scale is difficult because everyone has different experience and each school or each country has a different level of effectiveness. But as far as I'm concerned, 
At first, everything was quite difficult because online learning was a brand new concept, especially in developing countries like Vietnam. We hadn't experienced that before. Students found it hard to stay motivated and focused during class and because they could not interact with their friends as well as teachers. But later on, everything just got better. Um, this year, the average score to get into top university in Vietnam is 27 over 30, which is like the highest ever. Um, it is because we do not know when the pandemic will end, so staying self-disciplined, proactive, and trying to fit in with the situation is the only coping mechanism. And teachers also strive to find the best learning, uh, the best teaching methods for their students. I have an aunt who lives in Australia and she said that teachers there utilize a variety of apps to engage her student in class activities and making her class um, as captivating as they are communicating face to face like Google Classroom, Compass, Seesaw, Quizzes, WebEx, like a lot of apps. Um, so to conclude, I think that distance learning may be a little bit difficult at first, but as long as we try to be adaptive, nothing is impossible. And I think that um, online learning should be widely promoted even if the pandemic is 100% controlled. Thank you for listening. Well, Kuen Yang, thank you for, for attempting that. You're very, very lucky to have our two guests today to comment on, on your performance. Uh, they, you know, they, they are wonderful, established um, business entrepreneurs, investors, um, and just really, really famous. So, so uh, Anthony and Aung San, do you have any feedback for Kuen Yang? What did you think about her performance just now? I think the, uh, her presentation or her answers are quite good. Um, if I were you, I would mix this with some personal experience. Uh, I would say that uh, what you said is, uh, is right, but it's a little bit dry. So uh, a little bit uh, personal story, uh, personal experience uh, will make you connect better with the audience. And Anthony, any any feedback for Kuen Yang today? Yep. Just um, uh, first, um, first and foremost, I thought the 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 answer was um, yeah, well structured and well articulated. Um, talked about um, yeah, how it is challenging, and it's um, when and it's um, when online f um, learning was first um, introduced, but how those yeah, the challenges were were overcome. The only Feedback that um, yeah that um, I would um, share to that is that um, yeah I want to st I think it's important to stress that yeah it's um, yeah online learning is yeah it's just another toolkit I think it's um, I think we can't get away with um, yeah, doing the face to face learning as well so it's just about trying to blend those two together and um, and it's um, how do we utilize those two yeah like hybrid yeah environment. And it's um, to achieve yeah, the learning outcomes, yeah, whether it's you know, like at home, remote, or in the classroom. I think it's important to try to it's, um, not lose the essence of the, the human-centered yeah, nature of learning as well. Wonderful. Thank you, Anthony. And thank you, Aung Sun. And Queen Yang, I hope that you've had you know, some, some sense worth of really valuable advice there. And uh, after this call, after this episode, make sure you, you do check out other forms of online learning as well. So check out Maker's Empire, check out Top Class. They're wonderful resources for you, okay? Yes, I will note them down. Thank you. All right. So Queen Yang, thank you for joining the show. We'll see you next time. Wonderful. Thank you very, very much, gentlemen, and to our audience. That's it for this episode today. Uh, we hope that you've been able to gain more tips, to gain more resources, and to be able to be very confident and to continue to move 
on to be active in this journey towards learning. And uh, you probably watch the show because you want to learn something, right? So audiences, we love to have you. We enjoy speaking to you every week. And make sure you continue to talk to us via Facebook, via YouTube. And we'd love, love, love to reply to your conversations. Take care. Have a great week. And we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. This is Tozil, and back with you to Ivo State. Oh, look, today we've been, and I feel so amazing. Oh, that was. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>